Welcome back to Delore Factor Live with me, Dina Delore, and my guest, Bless Pascal and Barbara Clovis. Tonight we're talking about love. Now, love is what you make it, is it or is it not? Why is it that some people confuse love and falling in love? Or is it me confusing love and falling in love? Before I ask uh, one of our guests tonight to perhaps answer that kind of question, I'd like to uh, invite Father Clovis to tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> um, where do you want me to begin? Way back? Way back! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm St. Lucian born in Castries. Um, my father is from Sufra, my mother from Castries. I'm the first of five sons. Um, we went to the England in the 60s. Um, I went through the education, secondary education, uh, at the end of which I um, had to make a decision. I, my preference was for history. But because I failed English language, I studied mathematics because it was easy. And then um, I did uh, my first degree in maths and second degree in maths. And I thought, uh, well, I better get a job. So I tried accountancy, didn't like it after 90 days. So I went back and did maths because it was very easy. And I got my doctorate. Um, and then, um, in fact, whilst I was doing that, I, was, I taught and I fell in love with teaching. I thought, yes, I could do this. So I, I enjoy teaching. And then um, John Paul was elected Pope, John Paul II. And I thought, this is the man. Because he, he inspired me with his, you know, his, his exuberance. It was just like, and I decided instantly that I had to enter the seminary. So I went into the seminary, I studied in Rome, and um, studied theology. And I was ordained by John Paul um, in 83. Wow. And I came back to St. Lucia. And um, I was sent to St. Mary's to teach maths, which I enjoyed. It was, it was great. He was um, my math teacher at St. Mary's. Yes! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah he was um, great. He was great. And uh, I, mean, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy people. Mm -hmm. And um, the, what happened after that? Oh, then I went to study law. I um, went back to Rome and I got a, a master's degree in law. Um, and I came back again and I ended up at South Lewis. I taught there for two years, I think. And then um, I became Dean of the Division of Arts, Science and General Studies. And uh, then I did left and I, um, what happened next? Oh, then I um, got involved in the pro-life movement. And um, about six months later, I became principal of St. Mary's, which was a great challenge. Uh, um, I much prefer teaching, administration I can do, but I don't, mm -hmm. it's not really my forte. And I, in fact, I enjoyed being principal of St. Mary's. Um, it was a challenge. Um, and then I retired and I went back doing the pro-life. So I traveled the world. Um, I, I've touched all continents except South America. Um, wow. uh, no, mostly speaking on, on um, life issues. And then um, the Archbishop Felix called me back. It was after I, I, taught, I was teaching the master's program in California. And the bishop there wrote to Archbishop Felix to tell him what a great job I was doing. And next thing I knew, I was back in St. Lucia. And I was given a parish, library. And that I really enjoyed. Because that's why I became a priest, for, um, to, to pastoral ministry. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to have a parish. And just somewhere to say mass. If I just had one place to say mass, I would be the happiest person. I want nothing else. Mm -hmm. But that has not been um, easy. And um, then after library, in fact, I, s I wrote my first book whilst in library. It should be, it should be arriving in the island. It's been published. It should be arriving in the island sometime next week, I hope. What's it called? A Biblical Search for the Church Christ Founded. So it's scriptural. Um, and uh, then um, the Archbishop, the new Archbishop, put me in the chancery. Um, where I'm in, stuck in administration again, but this time to work with families. So the, our task is in fact to, to promote and to develop and strengthen family life in St. Lucia because the family is the heart of, of um, our, our, our society. Mm -hmm. you know, if the family goes, society will go as well. And life, to speak on life issues. Okay. So in all of that, I'm still hoping for somewhere to say mass. If I have <laughs> that, I'll be Happiest, oh. nothing more is needed. Well, you've been described as a very outspoken person. Are you aware of this? 
Mm, no. Ah, uh, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say I'm outspoken. Mm. I, I'm frank. Uh, if, if a thing is wrong, it's wrong. And if it's right, it's right. And I don't see why I should be uh, intimidated or contained by other people's thought. Mm -hmm. You know, um, after all, they, they express their opinions, and that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with, with a difference of opinion. Okay. But as I, what I demand is you give me a reason why. It'd be very yeah. interesting to, to hear your definitions of love later then. Okay. Um, Les, thank you for coming. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. <laughs> well, um, I'm from Viewfort. Um, the Pascals of Viewfort, if uh, people remember uh, Ma Boy and Papa Boy, we made bread and uh, the best turnovers and la baba and Oh, like uh, a bad. Oh, wow, <laughs> my weakness. Yeah. And uh, I used to, I used to, you know, um, be in the whole baking uh, the store with my grandmother. I used to be the one that carried the butter and the yeast along mm. the trough while cousins and aunts were making the bread mm. early in the mornings. Um, and uh, I was always, you know, very, very playful and kind of um, a little troublesome. I think uh, you're still that same way. <laughs> I, I hope so. Yeah. I, I, I don't mind keeping that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then I, uh, was, uh, I had an opportunity to go up to the States. Uh, and so th my family sent me up to the States to, to Kansas. And I was there for some, some years, in uh, my, what, my elementary years and beginning of uh, s high school, secondary school. And then I came back and went to St. Mary's College. That's where I met Father Clovis. Mm -hmm. And uh, math was not my topic. That was not my subject. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you, but you know, Father did tell me a little bit. Yeah. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I really struggled with, with math. Mm -hmm. But Father Clovis was so good. He, he, he understood the way I learned. And so mm -hmm. he, was, he really was able to twist it and, and actually make it enjoyable for me. Mm. And that, I, I don't know, I think I had a problem with that because I, <laughs> I started enjoying math, but <laughs> it was still a challenge for me. But he, he was really a wonderful uh, friend uh, in, in that time. Um, and, uh, and then I, I left because I got um, called with my family to go get our green card. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, at that time, I don't know if it's still the same, but you have about two weeks after you go to Barbados to to uh, make it into the States. So I went to the States and uh, I, st I went to a year of high school there to try to get in-state tuition to go to university. And I was studying math, um, wow. um, uh, lots of wow. math and, <laughs> and medicine, pre-med. I had decided wow. I was going to be a, a, a neurologist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I saw my first opera three years into it. At the university, they had an opera called Falstaff by Verdi. Verdi. And um, I saw it on opening night. It was a Thursday night. And I went on uh, Friday. I couldn't find anyone to cover my shift at the restaurant. I was a server. And I just went. I just said, whatever. The next morning, Saturday morning, I was uh, fired. <laughs> and instead of being sad about it, I mm -hmm. thought, yay, I can go to the opera tonight <laughs> again. So, so I went to the opera Saturday night, and each night it was just, you know, the, the fact that these people sang with their voices without any miking, with orchestra, mm -hmm. with the set, the, the beauty of it, the storytelling. I was just a kid in a candy store, never seen this before, and absolutely smitten. And so I continued, um, and I went to the Sunday afternoon matinee mm -hmm. because I was off work. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, by that night, by that night, um, all those nights I didn't sleep well. I just, I, I, the songs were in my head, the, the visuals were in my head. The, I, it was just overwhelming. And I, I knew, I had an uncle who always wanted to be a doctor, and he went ahead and, and uh, became an accountant because there was a shortage of accountants at that time. And for many years, I lived with him and he would say, oh, I wish I was a doctor. Oh, I wish I was. Mm -hmm. So I took this opportunity to really uh, take advantage of the university system mm -hmm. and say, let me try this. And if I fall on my face, at least I can say I tried to be an opera singer mm -hmm. and I can go back and do law or medicine or, you know, something. 
and um, and it caught. It caught. You know, I I went in about a week later to the dean's office, and I said, I'm going to go and study music. I'm going to be an opera singer. And the dean, uh, I was doing rather well in my science courses. I said, oh, I don't know that you do music. You sing and what? And, and I said, uh... Yeah, no, not really. But um, you know, in college, you can do anything you want to do mm -hmm. if you just put your head to it. So I decided I would go for it, and I lost my scholarship to for for my medicine uh, studies, and wow. and just kind of started from scratch uh, with music, learning how to read it, learning how to play piano, learning just everything, just being totally brand new and a blank slate for music and oh, opera. Oh wow! Well, that's that is a form of love. Now, I've just heard your, your stories in a bit, and there's one thing that you, two, two of you don't know. You taught maths, you hated it, and you love, I hated that. it, but mm. grew to love it. And I also taught maths when I was in England to A-level. Yeah. I, yeah, hated it, and then started to teach it, and, and loved it. So at least we have one thing in common. Mm -hmm. Now, um, before we go into the break, I want us to think about this in terms of love, because you actually said, Father, that you, you fell in love with, with something. When you were talking earlier, you talked about falling in love with maths, I think it was. Mm -hmm. What you just described was a love, the passion, the love, and you threw away other opportunities in order to get that love. When we, are, when we love something, is it the same to love a thing in terms of the career-minded thing and a love in terms of a relationship? The, the way that it feels, the butterflies, people describe it as butterflies. Would you say loving somebody and loving your career, you have the butterflies, if that's a word? Would, would you say, what would you think? Um, I would say no. Um, in fact, the, the Greeks have four words for love. English has only one. Latin has two words for love. Mm -hmm. um, in the Greek, there is stoje, which doesn't come, there isn't an English translation, but that is the affectionate love, the familiar love, the br love between brothers or between a mother and her children, the father and his, his children. Um, then there is philos, from which we get philosophy, and it's a love, it's a friendship between um, two people, um, usually two men. It, it, it's um, a relational and it's, it's common, it looks outwards, it it's deals with ideas, with the mind. And then you have eros, which is uh, male-female love, it's, it's a sexual love, emotional love. And then you have finally agape, which is a divine love. And um, this is a self-sacrificing love, one that puts yourself under, you're willing to be subsumed into the other, into the beloved. When you talk about love of a person, we're, talk, we're talking either about philos or eros, um, but when you're talking about a career, it's essentially philos. You know, it, mm -hmm. it is all consuming and it's focused and it's willing to be, to, you're, you're, you want to be part of it, subsumed in it. And for me, for the, the mass is very much like that. And mathematics is also very much like, like that. that. I enjoy mathematics. You know, okay. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to talk a bit. Can I just say we're going to talk more about this when we come back from the from the break? Okay. So stay tuned. Uh, Dolor Factor live here on DBS. We'll be right back. <laughs> 